Hey Straw Hat crew, this is La Mamba. It's my Cinelifter design. It's a nine inch and I'm gonna put it on the bench and show you what she's got. The overall goal of this Cinelifter frame design was to make something as universal as possible, accommodating a wide variety of cameras without compromising the overall flight characteristics and weight. First, let's do a quick rundown over all the features. We got a universal camera mount system. It's uh, adjustable with thumb screws from zero to 37 degrees. We got a quick release plate that's meant for uh, pretty much any kind of camera that fits on the top here. The camera mount system is fully adjustable with these uh, multiple locking points. There's actually five of them. This frame is meant to be as universal as possible with the cameras because it can fit wide cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K because the propeller sits below the camera thanks to the staggered arm layout. On the bottom here we have these uh, folding landing legs, so easier storage when doing international travel. We also got a quick release system for the batteries too, so these lock in place at multiple positions. Because both the camera and the battery are fully adjustable, we can optimize the center of gravity for the best flight performance. We got some design features that you would see with more premium frames like the AS150 plugs that are hard mounted to the chassis in addition to a mountable XT60 for a uh, regulator supply to power your camera. And we've got insulated, electrically isolated uh, VTX antenna mounts that are in an optimum location for best video performance. La Mamba has nice beefy 10 millimeter arms which really help with the PID tuning process. And we have sacrificial motor plates, so if in a crash your motor bends, it won't break the arm, but instead will break the motor mount, which is easily replaceable. And the camera mount is in fact soft mounted. If you look closely, these are uh, soft beta gels, which I sell on my store, so it's easy to have spares. This frame is designed as compact as possible with a diagonal motor to motor distance of 410 millimeters, which reduces rotational inertia, improving acrobatic flight performance. It's pretty light too, even with the battery and camera quick release mechanisms, we're under 1700 grams, fully built up with motors, components, and propellers. The frame itself, if you're wondering, is about 720 grams. That's all for the features overview. I'm now going to dive into the details of this design. So first off, why did I choose this crazy staggered design? Here's why. This allows clearance for the camera so that it never runs into the props. The benefit of this is we can have our arms nice and narrow because a big factor with a Cinelifter is keeping it as compact as possible so you feel more confident hitting gaps. All right, so if I wanted the arms on the bottom, why didn't I put these arms on the bottom as well, just to make the design more simple? The thing is, with Cinelifters, center of gravity must be optimized. So by having the rear arms situated on the top, we are improving the alignment between the prop line and the center of gravity because it's better balanced by the camera payload and the battery. Another benefit of the staggered design is that the rear motors are gonna have a little bit cleaner air because the front motors are down lower. So when the drone is slightly tilted like this at cruising speed, the rear motors are gonna get nice fresh air and this will mean smoother footage at cruising speed. My arm mounting design is similar to the Pigeon and the Puffin. It's a kind of weird H style where each arm is paired to one another with a thin sheet of silicone in between that provides damping and also takes up any slack in the screws to make it nice and tight and rigid. Okay, let's talk about this crazy camera mechanism. So to actually use it, you pull up on the lever, which is a little counterintuitive, but the reason why is because if I made it so you push down on the lever to depress these two nubbins, um, that would make it so it's easier for the camera to slip out in this direction when you're doing a flip or if during a crash. By reversing the direction of the lever, it makes it so it's impossible for the camera to be ejected from the drone. Similar to those Olympic recurve bows, I'm using carbon fiber's flexibility to act as a spring for a nice, reliable operation that requires minimal moving parts. Now I got some cleverness going on with the camera plate here. The camera plate is four millimeter carbon, which seems excessively thick, but I have reduced the weight by using these cutouts. The benefit of this thick carbon fiber is I can use these undercut countersink quarter 20 screws, which screw directly into the camera, just like that, 
and they're low enough profile that the camera plate can slide along the surface of the camera base without any interference. What I'm doing with these beta gels, which I also sell on my store, is I'm orienting them vertically. The reason why is because I'm killing two birds, well, saving two birds with one stone. For one, we're reducing the amount of weight because these are not only acting as a damping me mechanism, but also as a hinge point. This makes it so I don't need an intermediate clean plate as all other camera mounts work. Instead, the universal mount is directly hinged at these gummies, so we reduce a lot of weight that way. We've got another pair of gummies up in the front here. These ones are narrower and these ones are spaced out wider. One of the benefits of arranging them this way is anytime you kind of randomize your spacing of your dampers, it provides less opportunity for camera payload resonance, depending on how you have it set up. With the camera mount seated forward like this, you get less of a pendulum effect. If the camera was centered on the drone, it's easier for the frame to rotate in the same frequency as the camera, which is not good. Instead, when the camera's up here, instead of bouncing back and forth like this, it's gonna just bounce up and down. Now, in actuality, it doesn't because it doesn't get excited by the drone. It's out of phase with the natural frequency of the drone itself. This means that camera payload resonance is greatly reduced, which is kind of a bane of most CineLifter's tuning experiences. Not only that though, having these gummies be vertically oriented gives the mount more give and more damping in the uh, vertical plane or the vertical axis. It's this squishiness in the vertical axis that reduces the likelihood that the mechanical vibrations coming from the frame are going to be transferred to the camera. And we have the same exact quick release mechanism for the bottom plate which fits these holes. This is a similar hole pattern to what's on the bottom of the camera plate, but it's a little bit more narrow because most batteries are not that wide. If you're curious, these nubbins are made out of glass fiber reinforced nylon. So this provides a smooth surface for the uh, carbon fiber to slide against, but it's also wear resistant, so it's gonna last a long time. Now the battery plates that are used for the quick release mechanism are designed to be as lightweight as possible, um, so, and also compact. So when you fit them into your battery bag, it doesn't take up a ton of space. They're held on with this fiberglass reinforced one half inch strapping tape. It's something that's easy to source in any country, just one of these rolls will make a lot of batteries for you. Okay, let's talk about these landing legs. They're supported by these TPU brackets, but not only that, there is a slot cut into the carbon fiber that allows the arms to be fully supported on either side. In a hard landing or crash, these legs will probably be the first to go instead of the bottom plate. The front landing leg has two brackets in order to support the extra weight that it has since there's only one up front. One of the more convenient touches is this DJI Air Unit TPU saddle, which tightens down using just a screw down here, countersunk, and this allows convenient placement for your air unit, but not only that, because you can loosen it and tighten it, you can adjust the uh, front to back spacing. Now these AS150 plugs are actually threaded into the TPU print. The TPU has modeled three-dimensional threads that you can tighten against these nylon shrouds for the connectors. This is an idea that I got from Sammy Sang, Sammy FPV on Instagram. The placement of these AS150 connectors is very important since it's such a compact frame. Like these propellers are getting very close in all directions. But to manage that, you just twist the uh, balance lead between the power wires of your battery and then they plug in straight in the back right here with the battery wires arranged like this, there's zero chance of getting the cables chewed up by the propellers. I designed the cutouts in the top plate not just to look cool, but to actually be functional. These little slots here are actually zip tie locations. So right now I have one big regulator on here, but you can fit two small regulators in between if that's what your build calls for. And since this is technically an H-frame, a staggered H I guess, the direction of the carbon fiber is very important. So on these main structural plates, the weave is actually 45 degrees to improve the torsional stiffness to make the overall frame as rigid as possible. 
All right, so all is revealed. Uh, if you have any further questions about this frame, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. That's not meant to be a thumbs down, meant to be a point. <laughs> yeah. All right, see you in the next video.